Hey guys, Marissa with Single Abilities here. Um, I realized that I've never actually gone through how to share your iPad or iPhone on Zoom or through your telepractice sessions. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple ways to do that today. Uh, the first one we're just going to use in Zoom. So if you're using that, this is a free option. Um, well, I should say you're probably paying for Zoom, so it's not exactly free, but you don't have to buy any other software than what you already have. Um, so you'll have your Zoom meeting up, you'll have your iPad on, and what you'll do is go down to share, and you'll see the options that come up. You know, you have your main screen, the whiteboard, your various applications, and then it'll say iPhone, iPad. That's what you're going for. So if you have your iPad on and it's connected to the same internet as your computer, this should automatically work for you. Now, the first time you do it, it will say that there's a plugin that's involved and you have to install that. Um, but after you do that, it could, should come up with the instructions, which looks just like this. You're going to follow the instructions below. Um, so what you do is um, in the upper right hand part of your iPad, um, I'll post a picture of this so you can see what I'm talking about. You're going to pull down and a little menu will pop up that has like your Wi-Fi, if you're in airplane mode, your screen brightness, your sound, that sort of thing. You're going to click uh, screen mirroring and then it'll pop up with zoom.artma. For me, that's what they've named it. Um, so I didn't even have to go through the airplay, making sure that I had my Whippets of Science um, Wi-Fi up, that has all been done already just by me setting up my iPad, but in case you might need to do that. So you'll click the uh, Apple TV or the airplay for the Zoom link and it'll automatically pop up. So if we click back over to where the apps are on the iPad, you can see that it mirrors exactly what's on your iPad. Now, the one bad thing about this is that you can't uh, give mouse control to um, anybody, even yourself. So I can click on this as long as I want to, it's not gonna do anything. We don't have that functionality yet for mirroring iPads and iPhones. Um, what you can do though is, let's say that we just go pick an education app. We're gonna go play a little um, game with some of our younger students. It usually loads pretty well without too much delay, although some of them um, have a little bit of delay. It just kind of depends on how good your internet connection is for the day. So what I do is, um, because the student or the client is seeing exactly what I see, if it's for little kids like this, I will give them control of the mouse, and then when I see or hear them clicking on what they want to push, I will push it for them on the iPad. So I'll try and time it so that, you know, there may be a little bit of a delay there, but not too big of a deal. And so we can go in and do like a sorting game that n normally they would be dragging, dropping with their finger on the iPad. But here, you know, I'm gonna have them try and do it with the mouse. And you gotta be careful that it doesn't like fling it over there, but you can make this more full screen. Um, so you can just kind of follow what the kid's doing with the mouse and see like, oh, we're gonna put this one in the garlic truck and there you go you can play this little fun game with them now if you're doing it with older clients let's say we go back to our options here of apps little delay as we come back and forth between apps but not a big deal um, let's pull up something for aphasia so let's say that we pull up uh, talk path i believe this one is still working some of the apps unfortunately they haven't updated with new versions of iOS and so they're not working as well. So just make sure that your apps are working. Um, for this case, you know, let's say I, I let the client pick what we're gonna do. I will tell them, if you click, it's not gonna do anything. So either tell me what you want to work on or just put your mouse where it is. If they tell you, you know, that's more opportunities for expressive language. If you want them to be working on mouse skills, you might have them link to where you wanna go. Um, and then you can come in here and pick your activities. So let's say we're gonna do word identification today. We'll just start with level one as an introduction, a little demo. Door. And then hopefully you can hear that. I have the sound coming through as I share my screen. You can always up the sound on your iPad or on your computer through the um, sound features that you have for your external monitors. Um, but then, you know, if the client just puts it here, I know that they're selecting door 
or you may ask them to click so you can hear that they're really confirming rather than just thinking about, oh, do I want to go here? Or you can say, is it the left one? Is it the right one? There's lots of ways that you can still use these iPad apps, even though you and the client can't use the mouse to interact with them. So that's the first way that you can use your iPad for uh, screen mirroring. Another way, if you aren't using Zoom, I'm going to stop sharing Zoom here. We'll just come back to the regular Zoom uh, feature is to use a software called Air Server. So let me pull that up on mine. I use the, uh, the version called Air Server Universal. It was 20 or $30 for uh, a lifetime use, so it's not too expensive. And this is great if you are not using Zoom because GoToMeeting, for example, doesn't have this feature when you share that it has a built-in iPhone, iPad connection. So what you do in this case is get Air Server up and running. You start that on your computer. And then when you go to that pull down in the um, upper right of your iPad where you have screen mirroring, now it will come up with whatever you've named your computer. So I'm looking at Marissa laptop. I'm going to pull that up and then Air Server will mirror just like we did with Zoom. So right now I'm not sharing this with anybody because I don't have my screen shared in Zoom. Uh, so I'm able to access it without having to pull up Zoom. So that's one nice thing. If you want to play around with your iPad apps without having to use Zoom, um, Air Server is a pretty nice way to do it. Now occasionally it's a little buggy and I've had to like restart the application in my computer, but it's really not too big of a deal. It works exactly the same way that the screen sharing does. You're simply going to share either your full screen, let me minimize this a little bit, either your full screen, which will show the entire thing, or you can share it by the program, of course, Air Server Universal. Make sure to share your computer sound so they can hear any of the noises and music that go along with it. And there you go. You are now sharing with your client your iPad app. And like I said, it works exactly the same way. You're going to click on it with your finger on the iPad app and it will not let you control anything with the mouse. If I try and click on this, all it's gonna do is make it full screen and uh, unfull screen it if I do it again. So use the strategies that I talked about to uh, let people figure out uh, if they wanna tell you, if they're gonna hover on things, You know, depending on the age and the skill level of the client, you can decide. But here is a way for you to use a lot of your iPad apps. So get creative, think about how you want to do it, and um, I will follow up this video with a way that you actually can click different applications and have a little more interactivity uh, than we have here. So stay tuned for that video. Uh, this is mirroring your iPad, and good luck, guys.